Okay. Then coming to Sheehan syndrome. Sheehan syndrome. It's nothing but necrosis of the pituitary gland. Pituitary necrosis. It is when features are increased basal metabolic rate, alopecia, then decreased BP. So you do the hormone profile for this patient and you treat them with a hormone replacement. Thyroid hormone replacement, steroid hormone replacement, aldosterone replacement, all the hormones have to be replaced in case of a pituitary necrosis. Then coming to the vaginal discharge. You, there are three most common uh, diseases that can happen in the vagina. That is trichomonas, vaginalis, then candidiasis, then bacterial vaginosis, that is nothing but the gardenella. In case of trichomonas vaginalis, the most common thing that will happen is it's a green discharge. Okay, green discharge will be there. Then pruritus vulva will be there. Then in the vagina, you will have multiple strawberry spots. Multiple strawberry spots. It will look like a strawberry. Okay, the treatment of choice in case of trichomonas vaginalis is metronidazole. This is for both the partners. Both the partners have to take metronidazole. Then coming to candidiasis. It is the curdy white discharge. In uh, it seems it's a fungal. You have this fungal hyphae. This kangal hyphae will be present on the KOH mount. Then this is usually seen in pregnancy. Then it's seen in diabetic. Then it's seen in immunocompromised. And the treatment of choice for this candidiasis is the clotrimazole. Coprimazole or miconazole. Cotrimazole or the miconazole. Then bacterial vaginosis. This is the fishy order. It will be fishy order. And on examination in microscope, they'll have this clue cells as well as the this test. On KOH mount will be positive. Then the pH will be more than 7.5 in case of bacterial infection. The if it's in a pregnancy, it can lead to preterm labor pain. The treatment of choice will be metronidazole. Okay, the treatment of choice will be metronidazole. Then coming to the most common cause of this. Uh, Pelvic inflammatory disease, pelvic inflammatory disease. The most common cause is the infection of the fallopian tubary of the fallopian tube and the ovary by the organism chlamydia. Chlamydia. And how do we diagnose this? Diagnosis is basically by laparoscopy. And the treatment of choice for chlamydia is as the Okay. Then coming to the gestational trophoblastic diseases. These are a group of disorders where you have an abnormal trophoblast cell that grows inside the urine, inside the uterus, usually after conception. Okay. This is the gestational trophoblastic diseases. And it has got four variants. One is the hydratiform mole, that is complete or partial, then an invasive mole, then a placental 
outside trophoblastic tumors and choriocarcinoma. All these arise from the fetal tissues within the maternal host and are composed of both syncytiotrophoblasts as well as the cytotrophoblasts, except the placental site trophoblastic tumor, where which is derived from intermediate, which is derived from intermediate trophoblastic tissue. Intermediate trophoblastic tissue. Okay. Then coming to the uh, hybrid deform mole. In this, it is how, what are the symptoms? The symptoms will be bleeding will be present in the first half of pregnancy. Then you will have grape-like vesicles that pass out. Then the patient will have hyper emesis gravidum. Too much of wasi and vomiting will be there. With the absence fetal heart sounds with the absent fetal heart sounds the uterus will be too large for the estimated gestation age okay <coughs> this is what is your, the symptoms of how about the types you have the complete mole? There is 46XX will be more common than 46XY and usually of paternal origin. Whereas the partial mole will be 69 double x triple x or 69 double x y okay Histolog histologically characterized by the absence of villous trauma with the absence of the villous blood vessels nothing will be there usually this head deform mole it will lead to abortion between second third sorry third and sixth month of pregnancy before that itself, we can find this height deform mole through the ultrasound. In ultrasonography, you have the snowstorm appearance of the fetus. Okay, you have snowstorm appearance of the not fetus uterus. Snowstorm appearance of the uterus, then beta HCG levels will be more than 40,000 million international units per ml determined by the radio immuno assay that is seen in the trophoblastic system. Then the partial moon which we discussed has a very low malignant potential. Whatever may be the thing we have what the treatment of choice for this moon whether it gets naturally evacuated or not you do a surgical evacuation with a Suction evacuation using Karman cannula. Using Karman cannula. Okay, this is the treatment of the head deform mole. Then coming to the other mold like the invasive mold. The invasive mole is called as the chorioadenoma destruens. Chorioadenoma destruens. And here it invades the myometrium for the adjacent structures. And it might be associated with uterine rupture and hemoperitoneum. Uterine rupture and hemoperitoneum. This is what is regarding the invasive mode. Then coming to the placental site trophoblastic tumor, 
and i already told you that it is an intermediate trophoblast the intermediate trophoblast of the placental bed bed is involved in this one and here the local invasion happens to the myometrium as well as to the lymphatics then there is minimal or no hcg secretion human placental lactogen is usually secreted human placental lactogen is usually secreted and this is the one which is used to for the follow up of the response to the treatment of this placental uh, strom uh, placental stromal trophoblastic disease then placental site trophoblastic disease what is the treatment the treatment will be the treatment for this placental site trophoblastic tumors will be hysterectomy they do not well respond very much well to this chemotherapy so the the treatment of choice will be hysterectomy okay then what are the chorea carcinoma we have to know a few points regarding the chorea carcinoma where it is a pure epithelial tumor pure epithelial tumor which is composed of syncytio syncytio trophoblast as well as the cytotrophoblast okay the trophoblastic tumor usually developing after a full term pregnancy is the chorea's carcinoma after full term pregnancy this could be asked in an in situ <coughs> they give a <coughs> scenario and they say after a full term pregnancy there is an carcinoma developed what is it carcinoma so the answer should for this and should be choreo carcinoma and what are the clinical features in you 90% of the time it seems the abnormal uterine bleeding will be uh, there in the first trimester then excessive nausea and vomiting which is disproportionate to the uterine size hyperemesis gravidum basically will be there then in multiple fecal uterine cyst will be there multiple fecal uterine cyst will be there then this patient can go for a pre eclampsia and also they might present with hyperthyroidism if the patient has got a hemoptysis then chances of multiple canon ball metastasis to the lungs okay how do we diagnose it it's basically hcg examination along with the chest x ray to tell you the canon ball appearance and ultrasound will tell you the uterine appearance but the investigation of choice for all the things would be scan it will tell the disease as well as the metastasis how are we going to treat it the treatment of choice is the single agent chemotherapy the chemotherapy agent which is used is the methotrexate if the liver toxicity happens because of this methotrexate then the alternate could be dactinomycin the alternate could be dactinomycin so coming to the summary of this gestational trophoblastic disease you have this figo staging system for this gestational trophoblastic diseases that is the stage 1 the disease is confined to the uterus 
stage 2 where the disease is extending outside the uterus but limited to the genital structures stage 3 this disease is extending to the lungs with or without the genital tract involvement next the stage 4 is distant metastasis present distant metastasis to multiple sites so this will be the figo staging of the gestation trophoblastic diseases then coming to the last topic of the og discussion that is the gynecological carcinomas first we'll deal about the endometrial carcinoma this endometrial carcinoma this most commonly seen the risk increased in the obese people the one with an increased bp the one with diabetic mellitus these all things increase the risk of endometrial carcinoma and also few people who take tamoxifen for breast cancer as also the one who taken estrogen only pills for an ocp estrogen only pills for an ocp all these things are all all these people are also uh involved i mean i have an increased risk of an endometrial carcinoma the signs and symptoms of endometrial carcinoma is the unusual vaginal bleeding unusual vaginal discharge plus pain in the pelvis okay then coming to the cancer grading how are we grading to grade stage 1 is the carcinomatous tumor is confined to the corpus uteri okay that means only the endometrium in fact in the endometrium itself you have this one a one a is only to the endometrium one b is up to less than half of myometrium but ultimately it is inside the body of the uterus which is the corpus uteri then 1c is invades more than half of the myometrium okay then two stage to involves the invades the cervix but does not extend beyond the uterus only up to the cervix it is there if it's the 2a means endo cervical glands will be involved endo cervical glands were involved if it's 2b means cervical stromal invasion cervical stromal invasion will be there then three three is you have some regional or local spread in that three a will be tumor involves the serosa or the adnexia adnexia means adjacent direct metastasis okay and also you see the cancer cells in the ascites or in the peritoneal wash this is 2a sorry 3a then 3b is you have a direct inside in the vagina vaginal extension of that right? 3c is metastasis to the pelvic and paraaortic lymph nodes metastasis to the pelvic and paraaortic lymph nodes then coming to 4 4a will be invades the 
bladder mucosa and bowel mucosa and or or bowel mucosa for b is distant metastasis to other lungs or any other tissue which is far away from the pelvic region this is what they see staging of endometrial carcinoma okay how how are we going to treat it that is important how are we going to treat it if it's going to be a stage 1 endometrial carcinoma the it's only in the body of the uterus is involved right so you do a vatium vatium hysterectomy okay you do this vatium hysterectomy then second where you have this glands uh endocervical gland and a cervical stroma involvement what you do you do a hysterectomy along with that you go for a radio therapy third stage which is very uh what do you call big stage uh, where big big tumors will be there to learn the serous and the next are those things what you do you do a debulking surgery you do a debulking surgery along with that you do a chemotherapy and along with that you put the patient on progesterone therapy okay then this uh, after this will be three fourth stage is stay match stage three it is always mostly it's a palliative treatment do a palliative treatment for the fourth stage of endometrial carcinoma then coming to the cervical carcinoma these endometrial carcinoma cervical carcinoma and uterus carcinoma the oil curve oil risks are very very important there is a simple scenario and the staging and you have to stage it and i know it's difficult but i don't know you have to read it we have if we want to clear the exam we have to read it then comes the cervical carcinoma the cervical carcinoma is the most common carcinoma that is seen is the squamous cell carcinoma and the second most common will be the adenocarcinoma and it is one of the most preventable type of a cancer it is a preventable type of a cancer and how will this patient will present presentation will be abnormal bleeding then there will be pelvic pain which is not related to the menstrual cycle and heavy or an unusual discharge will be there and pain during urination will be there pain during urination will be there in case of a ca cervix what you do if you suspect a ca cervix to do a pap smear okay and do then do a colposcopy and see if you see a growth in the cervix you do a punch biopsy and send the biopsy for sample then there is something identity call the cin that is the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia cervical intra epithelial neo plasia this is a pre malignant transformation this is a pre malignant transformation and an abnormal growth of the squamous cells on the surface of the uterus sorry the cervix okay this cin can also be of one two and three types in all these three types the treatment uh, sorry cin 1 you treat it with the uh, infection control cin 1 the treatment is basically you treat the uh, hcv infection or the hpv infection and see how it responds stage 2 and 3 you do the leap procedure that is uh, using the electro 
loop electronic polarization procedure or you can go for the cryotherapy okay then coming to the stages of cs cervix cs cervix first stage will be basically invasive carcinoma identified only microscopically and it will be only a superficial invasion will be there microscopically only you can see this uh, this invasions in this you have 1a1 stroma depth will be greater than 3 mm in depth and less than 7 mm width okay then 1a2 will be greater than 3 mm depth but less than 5 in between 3 and 5 mm and depth will be less than 7 mm width okay then 1b will be clinical lesions confined to the cervix that they the one which you can apart from the microscopically you can see the clinical lesions and will be greater than the above mentioned dimensions if you take 1d1 it will be greater in 4 cm in size whereas 1d2 sorry it will be less than 4 cm here less than 4 cm 1b2 will be greater than 4 cm okay then comes the stage 2 there is a the carcinoma that extends beyond the cervix beyond the cervix but has not extended on to the pelvic wall it only involves the maybe the vagina only but not as far as the lower third vagina not till the lower third okay here the 2a will be no obvious parametrial invasions i mean around the cervix whereas 2b you will have this parametrial invasion to be present then coming to 3a in 3a there is no extension to the pelvic wall but the lower one third of vagina is involved 3b is extension to the pelvic wall is present or the extension the could lead to hydronephrosis or a non functioning kidney it can cause obstruction and cause hydronephrosis or non functioning kidney then comes to four where beyond the true pelvis the carcinoma goes beyond the true pelvis including the uh, mucosa of the bladder then rectum everything gets involved and it goes beyond the true pelvis in this 4a will be spread to the adjacent organs and 4b will be spread to distant organs okay this is what is regarding the staging of the cervical carcinoma how are we going to treat it treatment for this 1a1 this level treatment will be you go for a cone or a simple con conization or a simple hysterectomy okay with a lifelong follow up with a lifelong follow up whereas if in case of 1a up to 2a up to this 2a level from 1a up to this 2a in this level you have to do wertens operation wertens 
hysterectomy followed by radiotherapy or you can do combined chemotherapy plus radiotherapy okay then from 2b beyond that and the entire thing to be treated with the radiotherapy or with the chemotherapy plus the radiotherapy or the palliative procedures palliative surgery like the exenteration palliative surgery like the exenteration this is what is regarding the csr then coming to the ovarian carcinoma in ovarian carcinoma it has no symptoms in the early stage and only in the later stage you have non specific symptoms like loss of weight and weight loss and all those things the ca125 is a tumor marker for this ovarian carcinoma okay and if you take this ovarian carcinoma there are different types of ovarian carcinoma for example if it's a serous type which is the most common type you have the samoma bodies present here okay then you have the mucinous tumor sphere it is columnar epithelium with goblet cells will be there here the one of the feature of mucinous tumor tumor is pseudo myxoma peritonei pseudo myxoma peritonei can be seen then the clear cell tumors have the hobnail cells hobnail cells will be seen in clear cell tumors then coming to the bruner type so bruner's ovarian carcinoma you have the transitional epithelium here and it's usually associated with the pseudo myxoma okay then comes the uh, sex cot stromal tumors which has got a it's feminizing tumors are there virilizing tumors are also there called stromal tumors in this we have feminizing tumors feminizing tumor will be granulosa cell tumor then thika cell tumor then virilizing tumors the one which causes infertility will be arachnoblastoma arachnoblastoma then adrenal cortical tumor hyalus cell tumor hyalus cell tumor gynandroblastoma gynandroblastoma okay these are the different types of sex cord stromal tumors that you have to know of. then you have to know about this most common type of tumor of the ovary that metastasizes it is nothing but the krukenberg's tumor okay this krukenberg's tumor of the ovary is the most common metastatic type okay then very very important question is there what is that question ocps ocp protects against what all type of tumors breast carcinoma then endometrial carcinoma then ovarian carcinoma okay it protects against breast carcinoma and carcinoma and the ovarian carcinoma to the germ cell tumors and their mcqs germ cell tumors 
and the important entities dysgerminoma just dysgerminoma is usually 15 percentage it will be bilateral and it is the most radio sensitive most radio sensitive tumor and it is the most common cause of a pure malignant germ cell tumor this is the most common pure malignant germ cell tumor and the uh, tumor markers that can be used are the ldh and lp okay then coming to endodermal sinus tumors endodermal sinus tumors here 100 percentage it will be unilateral and here you have something called as the schiller dual bodies schiller dual bodies schiller dual bodies will be there and it is highly malignant highly malignant and the uh, tumor marker that will be present is the alpha beta protein and the alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiencies. Alpha 1, sorry, uh, antitrypsin is a marker. I'm sorry. Antitrypsin, al alpha beta protein and antitrypsin are the markers of the endodermal sinus tumors. Then coming to choriocarcinoma. Here the tumor markers is beta HCG and the Appearance here will be a cannonball appearance of the tumor. Then the drug of choice, we already saw it is methotrexate. Then the teratoma. Teratoma means it has all three germ layer contents will be there, right? Then it is 15% bilateral and it's Call this tumor ovary, stroma ovary, or the argentafinoma. Argentafinoma. Okay, and highly malignant if it's immature. Okay, teratoma, which is immature, is highly malignant. Okay, that's all regarding the ovarian carcinoma and then coming to the stages of the ovarian carcinoma this is the 2017 guidelines of ca ovary guidelines stage one will be divided into 1a where the cancer will be present in one ovary then 1b both the ovaries but capsule is intact 1c1 it's a ruptured capsule during surgery okay 1c2 ruptured capsule before surgery Then 1C3, the cancer cells will be found in the ascites as well as in the peritoneal washing. This is 1. Then actually 1C3 itself is like big for me. Now coming to 2. 2A will be the carcinoma is grown into or spread into the uterus or the plus or minus the fallopian tube. Okay, then to be it go implant uh, the cancer grows into the other organs and the tissues in the pelvis. Then coming to stage three, stage three A one will be cancer spread outside the pelvis. And only to the retroperitoneal 
lymph nodes whereas this uh, 3 a1 first subdivision it will be lymph nodes less than 10 mm okay in 3 a1 2 lymph nodes will be more than 10 mm okay then Uh, I think they made a mistake. This is three eight. This is they one only. Okay, three eight two will be cancer spread to the tissues lining the abdomen. Tissues lining the abdomen and so small, and you can see only in the microscope. Three B. will be cancer spread to the tissues lining the abdomen plus it can be seen with a naked eye is and less than 2 cm in 3c will be spread to the abdomen with uh, can be seen and it will be more than 2 cm okay this board is regarding the stage 3 coming to stage 4 in the stage of distal metastasis For a, the patient will have pleural effusion. For B, there will be metastasis to the liver, then spleen, then the distal lymph nodes, or to other organs which is outside the abdomen. This is what is regarding the stages of. uh this ovarian carcinoma then coming to the mcq points regarding the ovarian carcinoma this when you when they say this few few things like coffee bean appearance then call hexna bodies and contralateral ovarian metastasis when this is there then i will say it is a granulosa cell tumor these are mcq points let they give they will give you a case scenario and will try to find out how much i mean uh, what is the diagnosis in this if all these three are there then i will say it is a granulosa cell tumor then if i have 100 percentage of 100 percentage bilateral involvement along with signet ring cells along with an intact capsule and with a high metastatic ray, metastatic potential we call this as the krukenberg's tumor we call this as the krukenberg's tumor okay then uh, this krukenberg tumor the most common site of metastasis will be the stomach after that will be the breast okay then what are the factors that protects against the uh, ovarian carcinoma ocp pregnancy and lactation all these things protects against the ovarian carcinoma okay this is what regarding the ovarian carcinoma that you know and we saw that uh, increase ca125 is a marker of ovarian carcinoma in which all features ca125 will be elevated one is an ovarian carcinoma the other possible things are colon cancer okay then fallopian tube cancer And all these things, CA one twenty five can be elevated along with this endometriosis, endometriosis, then pregnancy, tuberculosis, and during menstruation. Even in this scenario, CA one twenty five can be elevated. Right. So speaking about the endometriosis, what is an endometriosis? You have an endometrial tissue inside the ovaries, and hence even it bleeds during the cyclical menstrual cycle. So you have 
residual all those blood gets co collected inside the ovaries and you call it as chocolate ovarian cyst okay or you call the chocolate cyst in the ovary then what is the investigation of choice the investigation of choice will be the laparoscopy the most common symptom that can happen here could be congestive dysmenorrhea congestive dysmenorrhea okay i told you the ca125 will be elevated how are we going to treatment treatment first you will try first line will be danazol then second thing best thing could be gonadotropin releasing hormone analog if nothing is working out the gold standard will be remove the ovaries okay this is how you treat a endometriosis then coming to the uterus in uterus you have to know about the types of fibroid and the most common type of fibroid fibroid is basically very common and a non cancerous the benign growth okay and it is usually develops in the muscular walls of the uterus they may dramatically increase in size during the pregnancy mainly because of the increase in estrogen levels okay the after pregnancy they shrink back to the pre pregnancy level this uterine fibroids are the uterine fibroids are the most common tumors of the genital tract female genital tract and among this fibroid types the most common type will be the intramural type most common type will be the intramural type in this intramural type you have menstrual disturbance that happen here okay then the the other types include the subserous subserous type that is you have the calcifications present here calcifications will be present as well as twisting will be present the subserous type then the cervical type cervical type of uterine fibroid will hint to having a uterine urine retention then the submucosal fibroid problem here is infertility one fertility or a, a recurrent abortion postpartum hemorrhage all these things could be there then what is the best investigations for best investigation for this fibroid will be ultrasonography okay then how are we going to treat the fibroid if the fibroid is present after menopause the fibroid will go for a cystic degeneration and it will automatically go for an atrophy okay if it's present in the second half of pregnancy then there will be a red degeneration that is present in the fibroid and you have to do for a conservative management the medical management the so called conservative management of this fibroid will be gonadotropin releasing hormone analog best better than the danazol okay what is the surgical treatment of choice will be hysterectomy or or i can do hysterectomy plus or minus myomectomy it should be reverse i do a myomectomy i remove that fibroid so myomectomy myomectomy plus or minus hysterectomy myomectomy plus or minus hysterectomy okay this is what is regarding the Yeah, uh, uterine fibroids. Okay, 
then coming to the genital prolapse then coming to the genital prolapse a young patient with two kids coming for a coming with a genital prolapse your tra- treatment of choice will be manchester's operation manchester's operation okay then a young patient who coming to you with future children they want to have children in the future they want to have future children then you do a procedure there is shrotkar surgery okay if if the patient is old or unfit for surgery and if there is a vaginal or when there is a vaginal vault prolapse then you do something called as the leafort surgery this is very important this leafort surgery they last few months and leafort surgery is used for vaginal vault prolapse or people who are unfit for surgery then a uh, nalli peras women coming with a prolapse mostly there will be only a cervical prolapse in this nalli peras women and you do an what do you do you do an abdominal sling operation along with the cervical pexy okay then older patients better to go for a hysterectomy along with the pelvic floor repair if the patient is having this blood are coming out through the prolapse do you call it as the cystocele right when you have the urethra coming out through the prolapse you call it as the urethrocele and this the treatment of choice here would be anterior colporaphy anterior colporaphy okay then what will happen if there is a rectocele when the rectum comes out of the prolapse when there is a rectocele you do a posterior colporaphy when if an omentum comes out okay if you call it as an entrocele then actually it's an omentous you should call it as an omentous seal but it's usually called an entrocele in this case what will be the preferred surgery the preferred surgery in this case will be the moscovich repair or you can go for mccall's cardioplasty cardioplasty okay moscovich repair or mccall's caldo plasty so this is what is regarding the genital prolapse that you have to remember in this the possible question in previously this question this was asked in an mcq one this was chirotsky's procedure was asked in an mcq one the leaf ward surgery was asked in an mcq one then uh, i think this moscovich repair was asked in an mcq one so they have asked all these things of course there are high chances of asking further things in the future also so this comes to the end of the obstetrics and gynecology mm. so i am going to end the class now